everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're going to do something a little different, or at least different for me. Um, I'm going to do a folio, and I've never done one. So <laughs> we're going to work on this together, and we're going to learn together. And um, like I said, we're going to do this together. So you're going to learn uh, through all my mistakes. I'm not going to edit anything. Um, this is my first time doing a folio. And really the big difference between a mini album and a folio is you don't have a single spine with a hinge system. So that's the biggest difference um, with what we're gonna do. Now having said that, the other thing that's gonna be a little bit different about this folio is it's not gonna be a trifold folio. Um, I'm going to make it a, a Z-fold folio because there's gonna be a girl side and a boy side. And you'll see what I mean in a few minutes. So let's get started. Um, there's a few things you're gonna need right off the bat. And you're gonna need three chipboard pieces that are eight by 10, three. And I'm not doing eight and a half by 10 and a half because we're gonna adhere all the functional um, elements directly to the chipboard. So it's a little different than having a hinge system and I've had to sort of work through that on my own, but trust me, that's the way it should be and then we're going to have these two one by ten sections and at the end of the day you're going to have an eight by ten a one by ten an eight by ten a one by ten and then an eight by ten now if it was a traditional folio one of these hinges or these um spine pieces would be a little bit wider so that they could collapse on each other but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to do an S pattern or a Z pattern depending on how you want to say it. So it doesn't have to be larger on one side than the other because they're not all going to close together. And as we go through the build that'll get a little bit more clear. So because of that I'm also <laughs> going to cover it a little bit differently because the center section is the center. This is gonna be the cover, but the third, we have the center and then we have the third. The third one is also gonna be a cover. I know that's not real clear right now, but it will become clear as we build it together. Um, so I'm going to uh, lay these down and wrap this and then I'm going to actually flip it over and lay lay the black paper over and and wrap it because the covers are going to be zigzag from each other and that'll become clear um, later so let's get started so the first thing I did was draw a line here it's just a reference line um, that's about where I want it to be it's about one inch and I don't measure it, I, I use the width of my ruler. And hopefully it's an inch, I don't know. Well, in this particular case, it is an inch. It's an inch, I just draw a line, and I use that as a reference to place this. This is also eight by 10, and it's on a 12 inch sheet of cardstock. So all I have to do is really center it. And then we can lay it down. And actually, before I do that, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna draw a reference, reference line down here. Yeah. I'm trying to, oh, that, didn't, that wasn't helpful. A reference line down here for the cover. And again, the difference between my albums and this folio, well, there's going to be lots of difference, but from the get-go, it's going to be that my 8.5 by 10.5 albums are are just that with the extra half inch, and this is going to be 8 by 10. So this piece is 8 by 10. And like I said, we're doing this together. I've done some planning, I've watched some videos, I've tried to see what other people are doing, but I cannot guarantee you that we're not gonna step back. So my advice to you is to watch the video at least far enough ahead that you know, you'll know you discover my mistakes 
early on and you won't have to go through them yourselves. That's that's the whole, you know, everybody has their thing about YouTube and their channel and their brand. And my brand is all about, uh, I don't hide any of my mistakes. This is not easy and some things are difficult. And certainly when you do something different, you're going to make mistakes. And so I want you to discover that with me and not alone. And, um, and hopefully when you're watching, you'll be far enough ahead that you won't make the same mistakes, okay? So there's the first eight by 10. I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna burnish this down real quick. No big deal, flip it back over. Okay, then the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a little housekeeping and then um, we're gonna add one of our one by 10 strips. And so, because I told you that we're doing this together, we really are doing this together. And I've had to rethink this a couple of times. I'm really not sure that a one inch um, spine is gonna be enough, but we're gonna find that out together. And then when we do, you'll have all that knowledge when you go to make your own. I hope it is, but I'm not sure. Okay, so, as in all my videos and all my builds, I think this is universal. It doesn't matter if it's a folio or an album. You need to make a space between whatever spine piece you have and the cover, and it needs to be at least twice as wide as the chipboard that you're using. And it could be wider, but at least that wide. I have found if it's not, that you wind up pit pinching things and uh, the cost is cracked spines. And then also having said that, I've had enough of that, even with doing all the right things, that I've learned that um, I always wanna use book binding tape on my spines. It's expensive, the book binding tape is, but I'm only using it on the spine and I think it's well worth it because it the, it's the most frequent failed spot on an album. Okay, so that's one part, right? So then we have another part and then we're gonna add this and then we're gonna add this. So that means we're gonna need at least three 12 by 12s. And since I'm really not sure where to cut them, what I'm going to do is do this side and then we're going to figure out where to cut the middle. Okay, and that'll be clear in just a second. So now I've got this 12 by 12 and I've drawn this reference line. My goodness. There we go. So we're gonna place this one here and then we're gonna use the other spine piece here. And then we have still a center piece for the um, folio and then we're gonna figure out if we need to trim this. But first let's just lay these in and then I'm gonna bring them bo both into the frame and you can see what I'm talking about. I'll make it a little bit clearer. I hope everybody's doing well. It's getting really close to Christmas. It's Monday. Um, we only have a few days left. And then it'll be Christmas. I hope everybody's doing really well. And it is the end of the year, so I wanna do a couple of things. Aside from giving you guys the last year project, I wanna thank everyone for coming and spending their time with us here at Scrap and Create. And furthermore, thanking you for coming and trying to shop with us. I know all of you aren't from the States and I wish we could service all of you, but we just can't. Um, it, it, we are a two person shop and um, we're just not big enough. We can't scale enough to service um, other countries as much as we'd like to. Um, but we really appreciate that you come over and watch us here on YouTube, and that's enough for us. 
don't have to shop with us. We like it. Um, and I've done some research over the year. And I'm disappointed to tell you that I haven't been able to come up with a really good source for you to get the same materials from. I just haven't. Um, there are some folks in the United States that ship worldwide, and I'm happy to give you their names. Um, and also, you know, if there's anybody watching, you know, from the UK, from Australia, Italy, that um, want to partner with us, we're happy to share your information because we're not selling to them. It's not a conflict. Um, but we just haven't been able to make that happen, and I apologize for that. But we're happy to have you here joining us. And so grateful and happy that you guys have stuck with us um, through these very difficult times. So that's enough about that. We'll get, we'll get back to that at the end. Because it, we are coming on the end of the year, and we really do appreciate you guys. Um, Julie is just a fantastic partner. Um, she really is. I can't say enough nice things about her. And her husband is amazing. So, and like I said, we are a very small operation. We literally, literally work out of our homes. So, um, and we do it because we love it. And we love you guys. And when it gets to be work, I think we might stop. We're both retired. This is not, um, paying our mortgages. This is, think um giving us purpose so there you go so we have that one and now we have this one so this is going to be um vagabond lady this is going to be vagabond sir and then what's going to make it different is well you'll see in a in a bit but we have to do something in the middle and it's going to be this okay so we've got that middle piece so here's what's going to make this different than most folios that you're used to. Normally they just do this. This one's not going to do that. We're going to turn this over like that. Is that right? I think it is. I got to think about it. This is going to close over. Nope, that's not true. This is going to go same way, same way as normal normal um folios are going to fold like this the difference is this isn't going to fold over it's going to fold behind so what's going to be different is i don't want this to be on the front so the way i designed it i'm going to pull something in here and it might make it confusing and hopefully it makes it clear but this is my um prototype I guess, so to speak. So you guys are gonna have to bear with me. That's not gonna go here, there we go. So it's gonna go like this, so yeah. Sorry, tape is sticking everywhere. So this is my prototype. I know, very professional, right? So you're gonna have the uh, Lady Vagabond page, folio, folio. And this is the center chipboard. Then you close it, fold it over. Then you're going to have Sir Vagabond. Page, 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 center. So that's how it's going to look when it's finished. Sorry, my tape, I don't know why it's not sticking to it, the chipboard. But, <laughs> my goodness. It's going to look like that. So you're going to have a spine, a spine. So a cover, a center, and a cover. So lady, then flip through, and then male. And that is how it's gonna work. And it's gonna be different, I know, for most of you. And honestly, I've looked through and I haven't seen any like this, and I'm kind of surprised because it is the ideal design for a he, she book. Like if you have a boy and a girl and you want the girl on one side and the boy on the other side, if you have a set of twins, one's a boy, one's a girl, or a set of twins and they're the same gender, you want one on one side and you know each one gets their own dedicated side, this would be ideal. So you're gonna flip through, turn it over, same orientation, flip through, 
So it's kind of a he she. And I, it's not my idea. I wish it was, because I think it's really clever. I saw this in a baby book that was uh, given to me when my son was born. And one side was all about what mom loves. And then the other side was all about what dad loves. But you didn't have to reorient the book. You just had to keep flipping through. And I thought that was incredibly clever. And it's only taken me 18 years to figure out how to use it. So here we are. So we're going to start with these two pieces. Okay. And then, like I said, we're going to have to flip one over. Because, and you'll see as we go through... It's not going to, uh, if, if we don't do that, what's going to happen is we're going to have these mitered corners on the outside of one of the covers. Okay. So that's where we are. So the next thing I'm trying to figure out, and like I said, we're doing this together. I have not pre-planned this. I'm trying to figure out how much of a piece of paper I want here and really more importantly, where I want that seam to land. So we've got that. I'm gonna scoot this over a little bit. There's our center piece. Here's our outer piece with the other spine. And of course this is gonna fold over, but then this is gonna go back. So we can't have um, we can't have this cover here. It has to be flipped over so that it looks solid like this without a mitered corner. So it's gonna go like this. So what's important right now is trying to figure out how these three pieces fit together and where I want that seam and where I want this seam. This is going to be wrapped on both sides. So it can't win everything. But I really, what I really want is for my covers, and I even less about the spines, but the covers, I don't want a mitered edge on the outside of the book. That's why I'm willing to flip this over, okay? So that's where we are right now. I'm gonna take a minute and think through a couple more things and I'll be right back. Hey everybody, uh, sorry I had to take a break and um, now we're gonna get back together. We're working on the folio, which is for the Vagabond Collections. And like I said, I'm doing this for the first time so we're gonna kinda go through this learning process together. So we've got the two outside panels and then we've got this center panel. So we're gonna join all three of these, but this is gonna be the cover on one side, and then it's going to snake around, and then this is gonna be the cover. So instead of just joining three pieces of paper and going across, I'm actually gonna flip this so that I don't have a mitered corner on the outside edge of the book, and all that's gonna be clear in just a second. So what I'm going to do is take this six by 12, and I'm gonna center it on um, this piece, which is the center piece, just like so. And then once I've done that, um, I'm gonna add it to these two panels and join all three. And I know it's a little bit different than what I normally do, but that's because I'm gonna flip this piece right here. Okay. So I wanna do a quick reference line on the bottom. And hopefully this is the best technique, but again, like I said, uh, we're doing this together. <laughs> so we're gonna learn a few things together. Okay, let's go ahead and take the tape off. I'm gonna leave the two sides on, just take out the center pieces and the top. And we'll remove the sides when we're ready to attach the two outside panels. And if I didn't mention it, I'll mention it. These, This is an eight by 10, eight by 10, and you're gonna need three of those and you're gonna need two one by 10s. And two 12 by 12 sheets and one six by 12 sheet to cover the whole thing. Okay. <clears throat> so it's hard to see, but I've got a reference line down there. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a, a tick mark at three and uh, put a mark here on three And three, and I'm just trying to center this piece on here. Of course, I need a ruler if I'm going to do that. 
Now this one is uh, eight inches across, so this tick mark is gonna be, did I do that right? Three, yeah, this tick mark is going to be set at four. Okay, actually, I needed to do that on the flip side. So that's going to go like so. so. Okay, I can see it. Okay, so that is now in. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and wrap these edges before we add it to the, to the other two panels. everybody's doing well uh, I had to give this a, a lot of thought and I actually kind of mocked it up real quick too uh, I'm not used to doing um, folios so this is kind of a new experience for me hopefully it's a good one and you guys are gonna learn something the biggest difference between folios and the albums is you don't you're not gonna have um, a hidden hinge system Everything is going to get attached to these panels instead of to a spine. So that should be interesting. I'm trying to think, have I ever done one? I don't think I have. Have I? No, I don't think I have. So this is our first, my first one. Okay. Now this is gonna become the centerpiece. So it's gonna get attached here. And this is um, a case of, you know, we could go either way because it's gonna be in the center. So we could put it on this way or the other way, but because I've already got tape here, I'm gonna go ahead and add it on this way. And I know I didn't mention this in the beginning, but this is just two pieces of the same chipboard glued together. And I'm using that to help me determine my space um, the distance between each one of these pieces of chipboard. So that's what this is. And again, it's just scrap pieces left over from the chipboard that I trimmed and it's two pieces glued together. And then I use that. And I like a long one because if you're using a short one, it's easy to do something like this where um, you don't get a consistent um, gap. So I like to use a, a longer one. And I think you get a more consistent result. Okay. So we're gonna put this on and I've got this little gap here so I'm gonna go ahead and add a bit more tape actually I'm gonna go this way Should be good okay so I've got a, a strip of sticky tape on this side and then two on this side and then I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna add it but first let's burnish it now when you're doing um, a folio where it folds over on itself you're gonna wrap it just like you would an album but because mine's gonna close this way and this way, um, that's why we're doing this kind of weird method. But um, if you just had it where it closed over on top of itself, you wouldn't have to do this. So hopefully that'll all become clear when I get the second piece attached. Okay, I'm just gonna put my ruler down here to, um, to help me space it up and down. And then I'm going to use my spacer. One side is flatter than the other. This side. Okay. 
<clears throat> I'm kind of resting my hand on my ruler to hold it in place. And then I am take the chipboard that's in my right hand, I'm pushing it firmly against the spacer before I lay it down. Okay, there we go. Nice. Okay, so that is done. Now, we're going to add the last page. And again, if it was an, a clam closure, I don't know what you call that, but if it closed over on top of it, each other, we would just wrap the one side of the whole thing. But because it's gonna close this way and then close this way, um, we are going to flip this. So I know I need to add tape just like I did on the other one. So I'm gonna run a tape. Here and here. Okay. And then this is gonna go down like this, so that means we need to add some tape there. Ooh, I've got tape showing. That's all right. Now I'm gonna flip it over and flip this down like so because I want to put my spacer in here, okay? So this is gonna get covered too when I cover the rest of this, but right now it's just gonna be exposed, so it's no big deal. We will cover that in a minute. And so I'm already learning something. If I had covered this whole thing um, and not left this exposed, um, we wouldn't have to come back and cover it with more cardstock, but it's okay. We will, we will figure it out together. Okay, so I've got my tape, both sides. Move that, and then set this aside and get this tape off. I'm gonna put our spacer in here, and then get this placed. <clears throat> And then we will cut panels to cover. Get my spacer. Okay, and then I'm also gonna use my ruler on the bottom just to make sure these pieces are all coming together at the same spot. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is how the book is going to look when it's closed. So we'll have the Lady Vagabond on this side, and you're gonna flip through, flip through, flip over, then you're gonna have Sir Vagabond on this side, okay? What do you guys think so far? Okay, now I think we're ready to go ahead and start wrapping this part. So we're gonna put some tape around here and, and wrap this. And then once we get all those uh, folded over and wrapped, then we're gonna come back and cover the bare chipboard with some flat mats. Nope, that was the end of that one. I was inspired by this concept from an old book, and I mean old, um, an old children's book that I got um, when Sam was born. That's my son. And on one side it was what mommies do best, and on the other side it was what daddies do best. And it was kind of the same concept. So you had two fronts instead of a front and a back. And uh, that's where this idea came from. I, and I think that's actually the name of the book, but I could be wrong. You need a lot of space, just FYI. <laughs> It 
it's okay to run your tape across this across this space but i find that when you do that when you open and close it you can hear it crinkling so i just i break it um but it's not necessary And for those of you not familiar, I'm using what we call a tape chair tool. And it comes in this vibrant day glow green and we also have it in clear. And um, I can't live without mine. I had mocked something up when I first started crafting and then later um, designed this. It's a very simple tool, but it really saves you a lot of time if you don't already have one. We do have them in our shop, check it out. I think a lot of you have been around long enough that you've either got your own or you use something similar. Okay, now I'm gonna miter my corners and then fold this over. And I need, yeah, here they are. Normally I miter my corners before I put tape on, but this is fine. So I'm just using the width of my tape tear tool, which is 1 8 inch. And that should leave you with enough black paper that your corner does not get exposed when you're wrapping it. Do I need to? No, I think we're good. Okay, I think we're ready to wrap it. Now, I always do the top and the bottom and then uh, the edge, the outside edge. I find I get the best results that way, but I'm not real sure how much of a difference it makes. I'm just going to run my score tool to soften, break up the fibers a little bit so it'll fold over for us nicely. I am using Hobby Lobby 12 by 12 brand paper. Uh, we'll see how we do. I've been having just a fit with um, recollections lately. Every time I fold it over, it's cracking uh, like right around here. I do use um, book binding tape so I can usually cover it up, but I wanted to try a different brand because I've been having such a hard time with um, with the recollections. I'm, I'm hopeful this will hold up a little bit better, but I'll let you guys know as we're going through the build process. And when I say cracking, I mean it's like splitting, like the paper is, is separating. So it's very disappointing when that happens um, after you put all your effort into something. And you know if it's happening when you're building it, it's not going to hold up over time with people handling it. So... <clears throat> One of the things I'd like to do this year is learn how to cover my albums in, um, in fabric. And there's a couple of uh, ladies that do that. Just to see what it's like, um, it seems like, in theory, it seems like it would hold up really well. So far, so good. And when we're done with the side, of course, we're going to flip it over and repeat the process.
Okay, it looks like I've got a little too much paper down here, so I'm gonna take a look at that and see how it's looking when we fold it around. So there's quite a bit uh, left over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut, go from the corner away and just cut off that little bit of a little bit. And then I won't have as much hanging off the edges. There we go, that looks nice. Okay. When you decide to trim your mitered corner, go from the corner away. Don't cut toward the corner. It's very easy to overcut if you cut in that direction. <clears throat> Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so that's ready. And we know it's gonna close this way, so I'm gonna go ahead and score these lines real quick. And do some folding. <clears throat> or did I do it wrong? Nope, we're gonna go this way. Nope, that was right, that's right. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing tape and wrap this side. I'm just scoring the edges helps it to fold a little bit better. And I'm going to use my 5 8 inch tape. And so far the paper's um, handling very nicely. so much stuff on my desk it's really hurt hard for me to turn it around because uh, I just don't have you know 24 inches to work with which is basically 26 inches is the span of the cover including the spines okay Down to our last few days before Christmas. Can you believe it? Oh, I hope 2021 is a little better for everyone. Okay. Now we're going to burnish everything. And then we're going to wrap it just like we did the other side. And then I'm going to show you kind of how it works. And then the last thing is we're going to... Um, make the mats to cover any of the exposed um, chipboard. Okay, we'll miter our corners. took my dog for a walk this morning and she's being so good. <laughs> Usually I've got some kind of a protest by now. I must have wore her out. It is a gorgeous day in San Diego. It's probably 76, 78. It's beautiful sunny, not a cloud in the sky. It'd be nice if it's this way for Christmas. We're going to see a just direct family, so not, not a lot of people. But if it's nice like this, we can either go outside or at least leave the house open for Christmas Eve. I feel fortunate. I, I live in the same city as my brother, sister, and mom. So I get to see everybody pretty frequently. Okay. 
And my in-laws are in Texas, so we will not be seeing them for a while until all this nonsense comes down. Okay. So I'm just running this bone folder on, uh, I ran it on this side, but I'm running it on the other side. I'm just trying to ease the paper in the direction that we want it to go, um, giving it some time to settle in. It does make a difference. I think when you try to just uh, fold it right away, um, you run more of a risk of having an issue with the paper, sort of the fibers splitting apart. I don't know why or how it works that way, but it seems to matter. Um, the other thing I like to do is use my hands to run it across the top. There's something about the heat and the oil in your hands that help too. So all those little things go a long way toward getting your paper to behave and not let you down. And when I'm done, I'm going to give you guys a close-up to the edge so you can see how we did. Um, and it's looking really good. And I hope I'm not jinxing myself. Just for reference, I'm using 5 8 inch tape here. It looks and it may look like I'm pressing hard, but I'm not. I'm just um, pressing gently and just running it back and forth uh, to get it to go into the curve of the spine. And if you, there is a gap because of the height of the chipboard. If you press too hard, there is a chance that you could poke through it. And then I'm also using my Teflon, which isn't sharp. When I normally score pages, I use this, but this is really too sharp for this application. And I have in the past poked holes in it and been very upset with myself because it could be exposed. Okay, I'm gonna work this in and then I'm gonna take a look at both corners and see if I need to cut in further or if it's going to be okay the way it is. I'm gonna just take a tiny bit off this corner. Okay, so there we have it. So it's gonna open like so. We're gonna have lots of interactive components. We're gonna flip it over and then it's gonna open like so. So I'm gonna set it on its side so you can see what I've done. And that's why we flipped the papers back and forth um, so that the outside covers wouldn't have um, mitered edges. They're all going to be on the insides. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out panels that'll go over this. So each one of these panels is um, is eight by 10, and then we have this one inch um, piece here. So I think what I'll do, 17. I think I'm gonna t take two um, 12 by 12, Actually, I don't need to do that. I can use eight and a half by 11, I think. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna use eight and a half by 11. Um, it, all we're doing is trying to cover the span 
I am going to have decorative papers on both sides, um, but I want it to be as smooth as possible. Most of the interactive elements are gonna get actually installed toward the edge of the paper. So let's go ahead and do I, do I wanna tape this or glue it? Now I'm rethinking it. Do I really wanna do that? What we really need to cover is this hinge area because I think it's going to be exposed. So instead, let's do something different. Okay. Oh, let's do, I'm going to cut this strip. Um, it's nine and seven eighths, nine and seven eighths. So just under 10 inches. I think I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to, this is uh, six inches. I'm going to cut it to three inches. And then I'm gonna put this strip here and the second strip is gonna go on this spine. So that is what I'm gonna do. So because this is traveling across a, a, a hinge and a spine area, I'm gonna apply it, tape to it instead of glue um, because it's an interactive component. Whenever things are moving around a lot, I like to use tape, it remains flexible over time. And with glue, you run the risk of it becoming uh, dry and brittle. Now having said that, I haven't had that experience with um, art glitter glue, but again, uh, just as a practice, if it, the more it's moving around, the more I tend to want to use tape. Okay. Mm. I'm trying to decide what I want to do there. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna do the two outside edges and then I'm going to, uh, the problem is I don't wanna to go too long. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the center tape here. And then, so what I'm trying to avoid, and I'm talking to myself, what I'm trying to avoid is a strip of tape that's actually right in the center. Because like I said, when you open and close it, you hear all this crinkling. And I don't like that. Some people, it doesn't bother them. I just don't like the sound of it. It makes me feel like something's gonna tear. So I'm gonna leave this open. And it goes right over the two channels. And because this spans to these sides, there'll be something on top of it also to help anchor it into place. So I'm not worried about it not having solid tape. Like on my hinges normally, on a hidden hinge, I want the whole thing covered. Um, and that's because the hinge is actually carrying the weight of the page. And in a folio, the covers are carrying the weight of the page. So there's not really gonna be anything attached to the spine itself. Everything will be attached to the chipboard pieces. So you're not trying to manage weight distribution on the hinge here. So because of that, I'm gonna lay this flat. Because of that, I don't think you have to worry about not having tape on every inch. And I can't see what I'm doing, so I'm gonna turn it up and down. Try to get it as flat as possible. I can't get out of my own way. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna wanna find our hinge area again. We're just about done.
Now by adding that centerpiece, it, it has added a lot of structure to the book. So that's another um, benefit of adding that. Uh, this section. And because I have this opening here, I'm actually going to shift this panel slightly over um, as compared to the other side. Because I want to make sure it meets here. So it's not... It's pretty close to center, but it's a little to the right just to make sure we completely cover this and still make sure we're completely um, covered here. And I was just doing a visual to see where my um, score lines were lining up so that I can avoid tape in those areas. Let's try that one more time. planned it. All right, and then I've got so much hanging over on this side, I'm going to go ahead and use 3 8 and just put another strip of tape right here. Okay, that's that's done. We'll get this in. frustrating <laughs> I mean what are the chances right okay and I think I took a little paper with it but we're gonna make it work I think most of it's gonna get covered with designer paper all right so so that I'm trying to line this gap up with this seam and I can't see what I'm doing, so what I'm going to do is mark it so that I have some kind of a visual. And that looks good. Okay, and then we're going to burnish score. flat And then we have one more score line here somewhere. There it is. Okay, 
What do you guys think? Okay, so that, and then it flips over, and you have that. Okay, so um, so basically that means for each side we've got a one inch gusset to work with. So we're going to attach all the interactive components to the left and right pieces of chipboard. Um, and that means that we can build up some pretty complex pages because we've got this one inch gusset, which if we split it between the two means that whatever components we put over here can consume uh, up to a half inch and the same on this side, perhaps a little bit less because we want to make sure we've la we leave room for photographs um, when it's all done. So it's going to look just like so. I haven't decided what I'm going to do to keep things closed. Um, I'm probably not going to make that decision until I get the interactive components in it and see how much bulk there is. Um, but I have a couple of ideas and one is to put a tie on either side um, to close it, to keep it closed. But like I said, I haven't really decided. And then once we get the additional weight on the pages, it may just naturally want to stay closed as well. So there is our um, double-sided book is what I'm going to call it because I don't know what else to call it. There's probably a name for this, but I don't know what it is. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Now, if you decide that you don't want to do the Vagabond um, Sir Vagabond and Lady Vagabond. I mean, the other thing that you can do is um, take some of what I do and design for these and uh, just apply it to individual pages in the typical album. So if you built an eight by 10, four pocket page album, um, you could, rather than building the interactive pieces onto the chipboard, just build it onto the front or back of a particular page. So um, it, it's a different way to do the book, but I wanted to do something different. I haven't done anything different since the recipe book. It's been a while and I think it's fun to try different things. So hopefully you guys are gonna enjoy this. That's it for now. When we get back together, we will be installing some of the interactive components inside the album. And um, at that point, I may make up my mind about how I want to um, keep the book closed. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I know this was um, rather time consuming, but that's because, like I said, we're all learning how to do this together. Now, if you want, you can um, place a piece of cardstock here and then cardstock here and here, which I think I'm going to do. I'll just do it offline and I'm going to trim them down probably. Actually, you know what? I don't think I will. I think I'll leave it as is because whatever I put on here um, is either going to get covered by another piece of uh, cardstock or by designer paper. And you know me, I like my tight borders. So there's plenty of uh, band here to work with. You can easily, you know, add your designer paper and no one will ever know that there's chipboard behind it. So, okay, that's it for today. Thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell and you'll be um, made aware every time we have new content on our channel. Please like, subscribe, and share. We really appreciate it. And if you're looking at for any of these supplies, in the show more of the description, um, the first thing you're going to see is material list. If you scroll beyond that, you'll see the cut list for this album and also links to our store. So give us a shot. Talk to you guys soon.